How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another show. This is You May Roscoe, and I am Roscoe. And today, we're going to be bringing you the conclusion, part three of a, a video uh, called 1992 Dream Team, the greatest team sport ever assembled, the documentary. And um, we'll be checking this out. Before we do that, I do want to ask for anybody who hasn't that they please subscribe to the channel and also make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be reminded of any time any future shows are being published. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Tiff121. And um, Tiff, I want to say thank you for suggesting that I check this out, for uh, rocking out with me on the page, uh, being a supporter and all that good stuff. I need more of those, you know, so, um, so yeah, uh, much love to you. Salute to you. We're going to get this thing started as of now. So let's do it. A man of the people, if ever there was one. Man, I walked up and down the rumbles every night, and the people were fantastic. They all wanted autographs and wanted to take pictures. We could be inside the hotel. Soon we heard the big roar. <laughs> we said, there go Charles. <laughs> So Charles would be walking, and then thousands would be following him everywhere he went, you know. He was the Pied Piper. Charles would go over to the village and, like, find the Angolan players and hang out along the Ramblas at night. He was the most memorable person of the 1992 Olympics. I just saw this touch he had. I don't think anybody else in the world could have done it besides Charles Barkley. At the end of the day, he was America's best ambassador. Barkley was celebrated for experiencing the Olympics on his own terms. More quietly, one of his teammates found a way to do the same. We had the motorcycle escorts and we bust through traffic like Dick Tracy. But this one day, we got stuck in traffic and we're just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And finally, I said, that's it. Let's go. Anybody wants to go with me, I'm heading. He'd get off the bus, and his family met him. He started walking right through the middle of everybody, and nobody noticed him. I'm still on the bus, sitting and walk down the street, and I'm saying to myself, I would give anything to do what he just did. Like, John Stockton would have had to have been the most unassuming dude on the team. <laughs> he, he, he more than likely was, you know, even with um, uh, Christian Leitner, who was the least celebrated of, of these dudes. And I don't even know if Leitner even played like a tick of the, any of the games. I don't remember that. But um, in John Stockton's case, he looks like one of the natives, you know what I mean, wherever they were at, you know, so um yeah, he had that unassuming thing about him. He looks just like a regular dude. He's no taller than the regular dude, you know. So um, he just didn't have that cachet of having that uh, that big personality and all that stuff. So, yeah, no, it would have been very easy for John Stockton to just walk a, walk amongst the natives, you, you know. So um, that, that, that is a, a cool thing to be able to experience, to have you know, this level of fame and still like, you know, like uh, Carl Malone was saying, nobody, nobody kind of knew who he was. You know, they just assuming he's just another guy, you know, so um, that, that that's crazy. And uh, Invisible Shot, uh, the Sirens, um, it's like that, yep. Anytime now, anytime now, yep, there we go, there we go, all right. So yeah, no, I've taken my Invisible Shot, let's, uh, let's continue. See you guys, this is called the Rhombus. See all the footprints? Yeah. All right. So the last Rhombus, it's like Times Square or something. There's just so many people walking. I'm six feet one. I'm about the average size of everybody else on that little walk. So I'm walking with my family and I have the camera and nobody's noticing. You think it's the sunglasses that's fooling them? It Must be. Hi. You're from America? Yeah. Whereabouts? Uh, Whereabouts? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. You've been watching the Dream Team at all? Yeah. They're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, are you watching the G Dream Team? I am on the part of the Dream Team. I'm, I'm a Dream Teamer, bro. 
and you wear this American garb and you don't know. You know what I mean? That's how unassuming John Stockton was. Like Americans ain't even. <laughs> that is hilarious, dude. No attention whatsoever. Finally, we ran across this lady who had the dream team and all the pictures on her T-shirt. Hi. Hi. Are you an American? Well, of course. You look wonderful. Why, thank you. She started speaking real excitedly about each of the players. And I said, have you had a chance to meet anyone? Yeah, I met Charles Barkley the other night. Did you? He's a hell of a player. See, you got all the players right there on your yeah. shirt. Is Charles the only one you've ever seen? He's the only one I've ever met. Hey, guys, do you know any of those guys on there? I think my oldest son, Houston, ruined the surprise. That's my dad. Your dad? That's your dad? Too bad he's not here. Oh. You play on I do, yeah. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without being bugged. <laughs> Oh, really not much different from Michael Jordan walking through here. For the players, surreal experiences had become the norm. But even more memorable were the unlikely friendships developing behind the curtain. It was a unique mix. You know, Larry Bird and Patrick Ewing became like best friends. I got a white guy from Indiana, and I got a brother from Jamaica. Patrick said I could pick his mind. It took me three minutes. Now he gets a chance to come back and start picking on mine. It took me one. We were probably the two of the most unlikely people you thought that would be friends. But if you look, not only Larry and I got to be great friends, but all of those guys got to be much better friends. We all enjoyed each other. We all enjoyed the ride. And we got a sense of each other as men. Then, when we got to the court, it made it even better. The Dream Team's chemistry turned out to be the hallmark of their success as the players closed in on what they came for. Barkley now over the side leading cheers. Their big margins of victory may have been a testament to their dominance, but numbers couldn't capture what made watching them so unforgettable. Guys played the best basketball you've ever seen in your life. It was literally like great poetry or great art. At times you feel you're watching a performance, a concert rather than a basketball competition. This was fun. This was like, it's how basketball's supposed to be. And at the center of the fun was the team's biggest star, who had come to Barcelona at the peak of his powers and shown how much his popularity had exploded. I will say this one thing about Michael Jordan. I've been around other celebrities in my life. I've never seen people react like they do to him. People go crazy when they see him. He was, uh, he was the Michael Jackson of the team. Like, why, you know, why would that be a surprise, you know? Even the Charles Barkley, who, like they said, he was getting like a lot of acclaim, you know, and and a lot of love over there. Um, but I, I, you know, what that 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 makes me realize when I look back at this, and even in current times, you know, like people, you know, they the people can respect real, and they 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 fall in love with realness, you know, and um. You know, with, with Charles Barkley, I think people could feel that everywhere. You know, like the way, no matter where you are in the world, you know, um, people realize it, it's that it goes back to real, recognize real, you know. And um, that, it, you know, what's crazy is, is that doing like this stuff with YouTube, you know, like uh, I, and I'm, I'm not a celebrity in the least bit, you know, but. I, I, I do get the chance to have people all over the world see and experience me now, you know, and um, I, I, you know, I try to keep it as real and as funky as possible, you know. Um, and so I do I do get some love for that, you know, even though I get a lot of I get a lot of disdain and a lot of crazy, um, a lot of craziness as well, which I'm sure happens with anybody who's being seen like that. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I've i gotten some people to say some really, really nice things and some great things about just how um, they can feel my energy and stuff like that, you know? So it's, I, I get it with Charles Barkley, you know, and 
uh, with Michael Jordan, it's just the fact that he's such a, again, like I said, it's like Michael Jackson or somebody like he's, he's such a big, big star. You know what I mean? Like you going you gonna start screaming and fainting and you know what I mean? Like when, when, how many times in your life are you going to get to be around somebody like this? You know, so it, it, it's crazy like that, but uh, let's keep this going. In every corner of the world, there was someone who just wanted to see him. Please, Michael Jordan! No one had the sort of pull, the gravity that Michael Jordan had. Jordan had initially come to Barcelona reluctantly, but an early morning trip just before the gold medal game revealed how meaningful his Olympic experience had become. What time in the morning is it right now? 6.30, 6 quarters, quarter seven, something like that. And I'm drinking coffee, so it's gotta be a hurry. Can we go now? Where are you from? Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Big fan of yours, everyone's a big fan of yours. <laughs> Your name? George Hirsch. George, how you doing? I'm doing Michael George, nice to meet you. Last night I hit my wall, man. I couldn't make a basket. What are you doing up so early? I do remember getting up early <laughs> to walk into the stadium. That is the thing that I remember the most about the Olympics. Olympic Stadium. Imagine all the athletes that's been here before us. It's amazing. What about Edward Moses? He won 122 consecutive races. I think everybody's got something to cherish. I think this is something that my kids are going to love one day. The Dream Team squared off against Croatia again in the gold medal game, offering the world one more lasting impression of their supremacy. Arthur with the lead for Bonham. Behind the back, Wexler. Team USA came to send a message tonight. We wanted to win and we wanted to dominate, but how we did it, sharing the ball, including everybody, we did it as a true team. The U.S. has defeated Croatia 117 to 85, and they have. That was probably the closest that any of those teams, 117 to 85, that's probably the closest, yeah, that somebody got to them. And uh, I remember that, uh, you know, that first game when they played Croatia, it was like a blowout dominance, crazy. This was a blowout too, but this was a little bit closer. And I remember that crew coach played a little better in this game. I think he had like, I feel like, like some 16, 18 points, whatever it was. So, he uh he ended up playing a little bit better, which was good to see. You know, like uh, for for me as a Bulls fan, like I realized how uh, Michael Jordan and Pippen felt about that situation with him and all that. But um, knowing that this guy, uh, Cool Coach, was coming to us like soon, you know, after this, it it, it was it was like okay, you know, um, I see you see a little bit of what Kraus is applauding this dude for. And so uh, thirsty to kind of put a stamp on him and all this. So it it, it did feel good to see uh, Kukoc do his thing as well as, you know, of course, America, like go and win the gold and all that stuff. So that was cool, but let's keep it going. And what the goal here in Barcelona. Campeón olímpico y medalla de oro, el equipo de los Estados Unidos de América. There was never really any doubt the Dream Team would win gold in 1992. But as they walked back onto the court to get their medals, the moment still overwhelmed them. You saw a lot of tears from players. It was a very proud moment for me because anytime you represent your country, you know, that's a prideful thing. Send chills down my spine. It was a reward that I had never felt like that I would ever achieve. To do it on that stage with those group of guys, 
It's a memory I'll never forget. Nothing in my life has ever felt like standing on that podium. I was getting goosebumps. Every single time I heard the national anthem after that had a different significance to me. I knew what it really meant, you know. As a young kid growing up, I used to watch Olympics on TV with my father, and uh, all he talked about was the Star Spangled Banner and, and the gold medal. It made him feel proud to be American. Being up on that podium that night and receiving it, my father, he'd been pretty proud. All those emotions just overcame me. I got to be one of the guys one more time for my country. I said, man, I'll never forget this moment. You know, if this is the end, this is how I wanted to go out. When the medal ceremony was over, another realization began to settle in. When I walked off, I remember thinking, that whole uh, dream has come to an end. The next season, every Olympian except Magic Johnson and Larry Bird would return to the NBA. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen would win their third title against Charles Barkley and the Phoenix Suns. On the way to six championships overall, the last three with Tony Kukoc. Eventually, other members of the team would also win titles. But each NBA player on the Dream Team would reach the Hall of Fame. I see. And that's, that's a classic photo right there. <laughs> this is just a classic, classic photo right here, man. Like, whoo. Look at, look at these guys. Look at these guys. You know, everybody deserving, you know, um, Except for probably Christian Leitner, but you know, and I'm, I'm, of course, I'm joking about that. You know, Leitner was bad; he deserved to be that. But, um, but yeah, no. But look at this assortment of like Hall of Fame, not just the players, but Lenny Wilkins and uh, Coach K and Coach uh, Coach Daly, and I don't know who that is over on the side. Okay, he had to been a trainer or something, you know, and. Uh, and let me see if I can see who the, who that guy is over on the other side, or anybody. No, look, uh, PJ Carlissimo. I mean, I don't know who that other guy is over on the side, but yeah, you know, these are big time coaches, you know. So uh, let me put it back to where I can see me. Oh, there we go. All right, but yeah, no, this was dope. Let's uh, finish this out. Still, it's what they did together that summer that had the biggest impact on the game. An impact that continues to grow today. It really lifted basketball and it gave birth to international stars who had nothing to do with those games in 92, but who took so much from it. We made the game a worldwide game. You know, I talked to Tony Parker. I talked to Ginobili. I talked to Dirk Nowitzki. Those guys say their first love of basketball started with the Dream Team. And I'm really proud of that. The world can change a lot in 20 years. But there are moments in time you never forget. No matter how long it's been. No matter how much else has changed in your life since. 20 years later, they've all kept ties to the game in one way or another. And they all talk about the summer of 92, as if it happened just yesterday. An experience still unlike any other in their remarkable basketball lives. I've never had more fun being around anybody. Everybody got along. There was no ego. We had fun. You know, clearly everybody reminds me I never won a championship. So that to me was like winning the championship, winning the gold medal and hanging out with these guys. The reward itself is really only a small part of the story. It's what the gold medal represents that will always tie these men together. 
this is like this fraternity. That's that's pretty awesome. You said it right there. It was it was the, the, the greatest fraternity ever. You know, look at look at these guys. Look at these guys. Even Lake does that. <laughs> I'm gonna stop messing with Lake now. I, it was, was crazy. Like I said, I don't, um, it must have been part one of this, but I said earlier in, in this documentary series that uh, that Leitner was actually like one of my favorite college dudes. And even when he entered uh, the NBA, um, I believe he got drafted by Minnesota because I, I remember having a, a, a Minnesota Leitner jersey. I had his jersey when he was in the NBA or at least one of the teams that he played on. But I think it was Minnesota that drafted him. But, uh, yeah, no, I had his jersey, you know. So, you know, I, I was I, – I definitely was a was a Leitner dude, even though, you know, Duke was, uh, you know, like I would – that was probably the only time in history, you know, that I would attach myself to anything Duke because I liked him and I liked uh, Bobby Hurley too, you know. And I remember, like, uh, Grant Hill and Thomas Hill and all of them being on the team too. And I, I like Grant Hill you know, a little bit, but I was really like a late in the dude and a body early. Dude. But uh, let, let's finish this out. I don't think you're ever going to be able to get 11 Hall of Famers to play all at once, you know, um, on one team. That's, that's unheard of. <sighs> we go on the bus. <sighs> we come back. <sighs> Walk out the hotel. <sighs> Wave. <sighs> Wave outside your window. <sighs> I can't believe it, I lost it so much ago. I just saw my girl. It changed sport as we know it. They showed the world how to play basketball. What other team can say that? I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again. It's an insult to compare anybody else to that team. Take a good look. Perhaps we'll never see a team this great again. No team will ever have that happen. Hasn't had that happen. And uh, that's the dream team. Two gold medalists, Olympics. USA basketball, dream team, original, NBA. Hey, give me something here. Stay right there. Yes, sir. Awesome. Man, that was that was excellent. That, oh my god. Um, uh that, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, the 1992 Dream Team, the greatest team sport ever assembled document. And um, that was that was crazy, crazy special right there. Um, looked like it's about 12. It's supposed to be like 12 seconds left, or but ain't nothing else happening back there. But um, that was that was great to watch. That was great to watch. Um, uh, again, you know this, uh, and Magic said it. You know, um, no no team has ever been assembled that's been as great. No team has come close since, you know, uh, to what what this team did and what they meant to to the sport. You know, they were saying how all these international dudes, you know, um, the reason why they even gravitated towards basketball was because of this team. You know, and so to to hear that. You know, and, and to be like, I, I feel fortunate, you know, to be able to have been around to see that, you know, while it was happening in, in real time, you know, um, the kids who are alive, who uh, live now and have to watch it, you know, via videos. And, you know, it's it's almost a crime almost, 
you know, but you can't help when you was born. So it just is what it is. But I, I'm blessed. I feel blessed to be to be able to have seen this, you know, and um, and any and anybody else who's like who's like me who is in the same position, man, uh, probably feels the same way, you know. So uh, much love to the dream team. Much love. Uh, I'm gonna get going before I do that. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the share button, hit the playlist option. You'll pick the one named Sports Reactions. Um, I have a playlist that's full of these uh, type of things. You'll see parts uh, one and two as well up in that playlist. So uh, as well as a lot of other stuff, you know, that's uh, sports related, you know, whether it, whether it be highlights or documentaries or stuff like that, all that's going to be in that playlist. So check that out. I do have playlists for other things. A lot of it is going to be music related. But um, as you can see, I have some other things that aren't. So whenever you get the chance, check out all of that stuff. Watch these videos to the end because that's what's helping to push these things through the algorithm. So we want to do that. Cash app, dollar sign, you made Roscoe. PayPal at you made Roscoe. For those who like to show their support or appreciation for the work being done on the page, there's that. And um, that's all I got. That's all I got. Um, it was a pleasure to do this for y'all. Uh, again, Tiff121, thank you for uh, suggesting this because uh, even though like I, I kind of uh, had it in my mind to get around to doing something dedicated to the dream team, but I, I'm not going to even front like I'm not, uh, I'm not I'm not always very keen on doing like the long, the long videos, you know, like uh, I realize that sometimes just like this time that you have to, you have to do it, you know, uh, and, and and that stuff. So um, I, I'm glad that you asked. I'm glad that you asked. I, I was actually, there was a little like 10 minute uh, kind of a summarized version of this that I was looking at at first. And I was like, I probably want to do that one because it's not as long, but. I'm glad that I got to do, you know, the full blown version. So uh, thank you and much love to you and um, to everybody who gets a chance to watch this at any of my videos. I appreciate y'all big time, but um, I'm going to get going. I got to go, you know, long day ahead, you know, more videos to record all that stuff. But I will see you guys again soon or you'll see me uh, the next time that you click onto a video with me. In it. So until then, be safe and be good.